Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll show you how to study maths effectively for any exam board, GCSE, IGCSE, etc. Also, if you're wondering who I am, please forward to the end of this video where you'll get a short summary of what I do and who I am. The video is also organized into chapters or timestamps. So let's begin now. First of all, you should definitely go through the specification of the subject. Let me begin by telling you that I actually study for Pearson and Excel IGCSEs, not GCSEs. And I don't do Cambridge or AQA because I don't live in the uh, UK. I don't do GCSEs, I do IGCSEs from Pearson and Excel. So over here, I thought this time, instead of just showing you the Pearson and Excel IGCSE specifications, I would try to show you an overview of each of the exam boards that I know about, such as Pearson, first of all, then AQA, and then Cambridge. I'll go through all of them very briefly. I'm not going to exactly go through each and every specification because that would take a lot of time and also I have a separate video about um, specifications and other study materials um, which is linked at the top and it's below as well and I don't think I need to go into too much detail because most of the important stuff is explained in that video so please uh, be sure to check it out before watching this one and um, yeah so before I go ahead any further let's just begin with this. This is a Pearson and Excel GCSE Mathematics 9 to 1 and as you can see the specification is right here. In all of these exam boards they refer to um, the syllabus as the specification but if you are doing another type of mathematics course in some uh, other exam board etc then it might be called a syllabus, course material or uh, it could be called a portion there are a variety of words that are used for this so over here I'll be using the word specification when you click on download it will take you to a separate page with the PDF and just quickly let me just show you the uh, PDF here it is as you can see there's a table of contents and then there's quite a lot of stuff included in the specification so what I want to uh, convey over here is that it's very important to go through the specification of each uh, of your um, uh, subjects but since this video is focused on mathematics you must go through the mathematics specification for your specific exam board for me it's Pearson IGCSE so I went through the IGCSE mathematics uh, specification before starting revising uh, for uh, maths and now that we're done with this let me just close these tabs and now I've shifted to Pearson and Excel International GCSEs or IGCSE. Now I do the Mathematics B um, qualification. I mean I'm studying for this qualification and there are a variety of other qualifications for math such as further further something maths. Um, I'm not sure what the correct uh, correct name is but there's also Mathematics A. I know that. So I'll, uh, I'll be showing you Mathematics B. If you just scroll down over here, the specification is right here. And it's uh, almost the same as the um, GCSE one, except I feel that there's a little less content. Uh, the table of contents is right here, as you can see. And then here you have it. This is the specification. And this is AQA. And it's GCSE Mathematics. So over here you can see they have the specification written like on their website like the entire thing over here and they have given a link also to download the entire actual PDF over here as well but for those who want a brief summary it's quite good I mean they have most of it on the website itself but you can always go and click on this and then it'll take you to the PDF as it did with the other two sites and yeah you have it over here this is nice and colorful. Yeah, but it's most of a table, it's tabular format, so yeah. That was AQA. Now this is not AQA, but this is Oxford International AQA. So the AQA uh, website which we saw earlier was for GCSE only. GCSEs are for those people who live in UK or actually those who live outside of the UK can also give GCSEs, but they're more focused on UK. IGCSEs are, you know, international GCSEs. You can infer from the name itself. And here's the specification for this. 
they have quite a lot of comparisons in this one. I went through this one and they had quite a lot of content, like a lot. And I'm not sure if you would be able to go through the entire thing. So I would recommend you just go through some of it if you study for this uh, course. Then there's Cambridge. Many people uh, study for Cambridge um, IGCSE. So here's the IGCSE mathematics page. And as you can see, I said that they all call it specification, but I was wrong. Um, I just realized that they call it syllabus over here they haven't called it specification cambridge has called it syllabus so either way it's the same thing syllabus here you go this is the entire thing they have some nice diagrams and yeah so that's it these were the three sites and the main thing that i wanted to convey was that it's very important to know the syllabus to know what you have to study for what's going to be assessed in the exam how it's going to be assessed etc and you'll see later on in the video how i try to remember all this important information after reading the specification my next tip is to take step-by-step -step notes so over here are some of my notes which i take on the bear app and a guide on how to use the bear app is in the top right corner as well as below in the description box and i use the bear app for taking notes i don't use paper for taking elaborate notes brief notes i might use paper anyway so getting to the point if you're a person who takes quite a lot of time to understand how to solve a problem or how to go through a process in you know solving some uh, some word problem etc then taking step-by-step -step notes is a good way of understanding how to solve the problem so for example over here are just some you know random definitions to make me remember what these words mean but the step-by-step -step notes that i'm referring to will look like uh will look something like this so over here you see steps to make inverse so over here i'm talking about the steps that i have to take to make an inverse of a function so this is something that i sometimes get confused in or actually i sometimes make silly mistakes in so i wrote down a step-by-step -step process so that i can remember how to um, do it and so that it kind of visualizes in my brain and so over here like for example the first step write y as fx and then i gave examples as well and then like that i just wrote steps on how to make it inverse so in the same way if you find something hard to understand and somebody explains it to you you feel like you'll forget later on then you can just um write it down in the form of steps and later on it might help you and yeah so that's one tip of mine if you want you can write step by step notes but if it doesn't work for you if you're a natural at maths then you don't need to Probably the most important tip for maths is to practice and I'm going to divide my tip into three parts. Number one, you can practice from a textbook. So over here, I have a practice book in which I practice questions and on the first page, I usually organize it according to the key codes and a small overview of the entire subject so in codes i'll just write you know the codes of the papers that i have to give later on for igcses according to pearson and then in overview it's just a brief you know overview of the papers such as their duration and the number of questions as well as a summary of the content that's going to be assessed as i said earlier about the specification so this is where i store that important information and over here are some practice questions that I did. As you can see, red is for corrections that I made of anything wrong I got or notes, etc. And I am going to be doing them in this video. I am going to be doing one question, I think, from the textbook in this video. And then I'll come to the second part of practicing maths.
If you don't have a textbook to practice from, practice from past papers. And also, even if you do have a textbook, you should still practice from past papers to give you a general idea of how the um, questions are assessed. And, you know, you'll just get a general idea of how the format is, etc. And over here, I'm just checking some stuff from my school notebook because i forgot quite a lot of stuff and it's not like i did the whole paper in one sitting i just did a few questions because actually i hadn't practiced maths for a long time so i couldn't do some of the questions and i left them and thought i would ask a friend or a teacher later on Once you're done practicing, please make sure to check your answers because that helps you to know where you went wrong, what mistakes you made and how you should improve and on what areas. And if you're doing it from a textbook, then you can check in the back of the textbook. The answers are usually there or ask a teacher or a friend to check your answers. Or otherwise, if you did a past paper like me, you can just check the mark scheme online. And yeah, let's move on to the next tip. Making flashcards is an effective way to study, it triggers active recall, and overall it's a great way to study. So over here I use Quizlet.com to create my maths flashcards, and websites like Quizlet.com and also Brainscape.com, which is another website for flashcards, are really useful for the one reason that making flashcards using these websites is so much easier than making them physically. Of course, for some subjects, which uh, in which you need to draw diagrams and, you know, customize your flashcards, it's probably better to make physical flashcards. But for those that you don't really need diagrams for, such as maths, you can go ahead and create them online and it's really easy, really fast, and the methods of testing yourself, they're quite great too, as I'll show you just now. And that's why I used Quizlet.com to make my maths flashcards, whereas for commerce and literature, I did not because I wanted to include flowcharts, etc. But you can obviously choose whatever method you like. You can just use Quizlet for all your subjects. So yeah, as I was saying, the methods of testing yourself in Quizlet are amazing. For Brainscape.com, that's another website for flashcards. The uh, ways of testing yourself are not that many. So that's why I use Quizlet.com, which is this website. And first of all, they just give you an overview of your flashcard like they're doing right now. As you can see, the term is there. And then when you click, you can see the definition and you can see all your flashcards in this way. And then on the side, there are some other uh, methods of testing yourself, such as test. I usually use test because it gives you a combination of different methods through which you can test yourself, such as writing down the answer or multiple choice questions, but if you want to do it the traditional flashcards way, you can just click on flashcards, which was also there in that uh, left panel. And yeah, so overall Quizlet.com is a good website for creating flashcards and it's absolutely free. Later on, inshallah, I'm going to make a separate video on flashcards, how to use them, how to create them, what they're for. So stay tuned for a video like that one. And if you're watching this sometime in the future, then I probably will already have made it and it will be in the description box below. Another advice is to always try to ask for help if you're stuck on a question or you really can proceed um, solving a question. As you can see, everyone makes mistakes as well as me. Look at how many mistakes I made in these questions. But you should not get discouraged by the amount of mistakes you made. You should just keep on going and try to get it right on your own or ask others for help, such as an elder sibling, teacher, or... If you really can't get any help, turn to YouTube. I know a particular YouTube channel, which is specifically for maths called Tech Math, and it's a great channel. Here's a view of it. You can go and visit it yourself. The link is below. And yeah, you should definitely watch Tech Math's videos. They have videos on a range of topics from fractions to ratios to square root, etc. And lots of handy tips and tricks as well.
So that's it. That's the end of the video. If you're wondering who I am, well, I'm a scholarship awarded student studying at a school in the UAE and I like to write short stories in my free time. I also love to read books and I take photographs which I upload on unsplash.com and I'm also a beginner Apple Swift coder. If you're wondering where I took my course, I took it at treehouse.com and I'm also Azure Fundamentals certified Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Certified, in fact, and the link to my badge is down below. Mm -hmm.